The NAs you said, a little heavy, don't you think, all those sausages? What do you think? Twelve minutes past eight. So, crisis, insoluble problem, major crisis. Both stepmothers want their names on the wedding invitation. <laughs> Catherine adores her stepmother, who more or less brought her up. She wants her name on the invitation. She wants it, and Catherine's stepmother is not anticipating, which is understandable since the mother is dead, not appearing next to the father. Whereas my stepmother, whom I detest, well, it's out of the question. Her name should appear on the invitation, but my father won't have his name on it if hers isn't, unless Catherine's stepmother is left off, which is completely unacceptable. So I suggested that none of the parents' names be on it. And after all, we're not adolescents. We can announce our wedding and invite people ourselves. <coughs> Thank you. So Catherine screams her head off. Arguing that would be like a slap in the face to her parents who were paying through the nose for the reception, and particularly for her stepmother, who's got all this trouble and it's not even her daughter. So I finally let myself be persuaded, totally against my better judgment, because she wore me down. I finally agreed that my stepmother, whom I detest, who is a complete bitch, <laughs> will have her name on the wedding invitation. So I telephoned my mother to warn her. her mother, I said, I have done everything I can to avoid this, but we have absolutely no choice in the matter. Colette's name has to be on the invitation. Well, she says, if Colette's name is on the invitation, take mine off it. And I said, Mother, please, I beg of you, don't make things even more difficult. She said, well, how dare you suggest that my name be left to float around the card on its own as if I were an abandoned woman below Colette who'll be clamped to your father's name like a limpet. <laughs> Mother, I said, I have friends waiting for me. I'm going to hang up. Well, Talk about all of this tomorrow after a good night's sleep. Well, why is it, she says, I am always an afterthought. What are you talking about, Mother? You're not <laughs> always an afterthought. <laughs> of course I am. And when you say don't make things even more difficult, what you mean is everything's already been decided. Everything's been organized without me. Everything's been cooked up behind my back. Good old Nadia. She'll agree to anything. And all this, she said, get this, all this in aid of an event, the importance of which I'm having some trouble grasping. Mother, I said, I have friends waiting for me. Oh, that's right. There's always something better to do. Anything's more important than I am. <laughs> Goodbye. And she hung up. Well, Catherine, who's sitting next to me, couldn't hear her side of the conversation. So she says, well, what did she say? I said, well, she just doesn't want her name on the invitation with Colette, which is understandable. That's not what I'm talking about. Why did she say about the wedding? Well, nothing. You're lying. I'm not. <laughs> she just doesn't want her name on the invitation with Colette. Well, you call your mother and you tell her when your son is getting married, you rise above your vanities. Yeah, well, you might have said the same thing to your stepmother. That's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's me. I'm the one. I'm the one who's saying her name is on the invitation, not her, the poor thing. She is tact personified. If she had any idea of the problems this was causing, she would be down on her knees begging to have her name taken off the invitation. Now you call your mother. So I call her again. By this time, I am in shreds. And Kathy is listening on the extension. Yvonne, my mother says, up to now you've conducted your affairs in the most chaotic way imaginable, and now just because out of the blue you've decided to embark on matrimony, I'm obliged to spend all afternoon and evening with your father, a man I haven't seen in 17 years, and to whom I was not expecting to have to reveal my hip size and my puffy cheeks, not to mention Colette, who I might mention, according to Felix Perillari, has taken up bridge. Because my mother is always playing for me. So, I, I can see all that. But on the invitation, the one item everyone will receive and examine, I insist on making a solo appearance. Well, Kathy's listening in on the extension, and she shakes her head and screws up her face in disgust. So I said, Mother, why are you so selfish? <gasps> I am not selfish! I am not selfish! Oh, Yvonne, don't you start to... Don't you be like Madame Romero was this morning when she said I had a heart of stone, that everybody in our family had a heart of stone. That's what Madame Madame Romero said this morning, she's completely insane, by the way. <laughs> when I refused to raise her pay to 60 francs an hour cash, she had the gall to say everyone in our family had a heart of stone, and she knows perfectly well about poor Andre's pacemaker, and you haven't even bothered to drop him a line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead, laugh, dear. Everything is a joke to you. Yvonne, it's not me who's the selfish one. You have got a lot to learn about life, but you go, darling. You go ahead, go ahead and see your precious friends. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> 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 
Golly, nothing's been resolved. I hung up. Mini drama with Catherine cut short because I was late. <laughs>